so much for being here. Thank you for joining me while I get to geek out a little bit in my blooming alley. It's the end of July. Oh, why can't time just slow down when it comes to the summer months? It seems like they go by so fast and the winter months are just like dragging on. Anywho, let's not preempt the situation. We are at the end of July, still got some more hot weather to come and this is my Stanhopia acidensis. Yes, what you see in the background, I promise you, I promise you, I took all the clips that I could. All the blooms have been dedicated, but those are in future videos. That is the nature of blooms for you. I get to be able to take clips, dedicate them. They'll show up later, but you see now they are gone. The thing with Stanhopia blooms, truly they are not very long lasting, but I've saved the footage and in future videos, they will show up and it was quite impressive. These guys opened yesterday. So this is my last spike and I had 16 blooms this season based on the hob material and the basket. There were a few things I had to learn and navigate myself around. And I was looking forward to, I know I love my blooms, but I was looking forward to reclaiming my blooming alley and not bending down to get through to protect the spikes and then bending back up again to come out the other side. Um, yeah, that's not gonna happen. And we're gonna have to re focus what we're going to do with Stanhopias because the new growths have decided to come out through the bottom of the basket. <laughs> I was going to put them back on a stand. Nah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Oh my goodness. Okay. So the plan for these is to get them into the under, like the shaded part of my east side, get two hooks up there and have them hanging there permanently. Uh, that has to be organized, but still, still got my beautiful big red fragrance here. It's gorgeous. It's delicious. I would, I'm, I am going to miss them, but I will not miss the bending down and the bending through. It is getting a bit old, to be honest with you. And while we're down here, because down is easy, coming back up is a little bit difficult. <laughs> and this is my Leodora sweet memory still holding on to two blooms still has her fragrance and I get to enjoy another one because I've got another bud coming. Right next door to it there though is Nani Puakea Dogashima. I've got a video coming on that as well. I still have to film it. Got a story to tell and we've got work to do there but looking a lot better and I would like to share that with you. Back to the summer bloomers though. How are these colors just not popping? Oh my goodness, I love it. Sometimes cameras do pick up on things much better than the naked eye. Gorgeous, or maybe it's just my eyes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Giraffe here, still gorgeous. I doubt I'm gonna get another bud out of this one. More magnesium is needed, I think, but new leaf growing, it's absorbing an old spike. It's a busy orchid and I love it because it is growing so many other spikes and if I can do it justice, it should be quite respectable coming next year. And then I have here my Yin's Black Eagle, which did not bloom for me either. But when you come with a leaf like that, you are forgiven. You do you boo. I love those leaves. The same with the Violacea Cerula back here. New leaf, new root, happy days. And then here is my Speciosa cross with Violacea, would be a first time bloomer if we can make it. That would be great. This was something I've been waiting for for quite some time and I hope it's not mislabeled. That would be nice too. And then let me just put you back up here, seeing as it is the blooming alley and not just leaves and roots. Here's my Kaukita Kut, crossed with Corvindiana. Look at that. It took me a while to get used to these blooms because it's not what I bought, but I love them. Now I love them. Look at that fuzzy lip. So cool. And it grew a second spike for me. This is a brand new spike. And the first bloom opened today. Not much of a fragrance on this one. Plastic, which is a shame, but gorgeous blooms. And then here is Lady Chatterley. 
<laughs> Still grinning away. And I have another bud coming in the back. So she has been very, very generous this year. Has a very, very gorgeous fragrance of plastic, but there is a hint of sweetness to it. If you were to open a Tupperware, let's say, and you had cake in that Tupperware, and we're about to clean out that Tupperware box, you still get that fragrance of the sweet cake, even though it's got a plasticky smell. That's what she is smelling like at the moment. Right, let me see what else I can show you on this shelf. Oh yes, my Shilleriana there is doing fabulous. Beautiful new growth right there. And there's another one tucked back there and a third one right in the back. I doubt she will bloom. She has to reestablish herself, but the roots are going nuts in the pot. So there's a lot of flushing happening right now. She's a bit more work at the moment than what she's actually doing for me in my blooming alley. But hey ho, we got to make up for the mistakes of the past. This is Dendrobium exile. Beautiful growth reaching for the sky. The two new growths of the season are tucked in there. To the right, you can see one. To the left, it's growing beautifully. Loving its life on the scrubby pad. I think it's amazing. The polyanthem is going nuts as well. All these growths, fabulous, I love it. There's some tucked in the back there as well. Two new growths right there. And my goodness, she's not done yet. I'm getting cakeys. Well, what do you know? Gorgeous. The Victoria Regina next to her is still growing. Scoot back, there we go. Getting longer and longer. And the one new growth of the season is also doing its thing, starting on some roots in that moss. Just one new growth. Hmm. Maybe it needs a little bit more fertilizer. Hmm. Anywho, this is my unicum. I thought it had stopped growing, but it hasn't. So that's great news. There'll be a little bit more of that cane. That's awesome. But here's Dendrobium bensoniana, which was supposedly sent as a replacement unicum. <coughs> it's finished blooming, but <laughs> check out this growth. Check it out in your face. Beautiful, super long. And there's a second one coming right behind it. And uh, yeah, the next year is going to be great. Fabulous. My Eonopsis popcorn Haruri is starting to open the buds on the first spike. And there's a second spike in the back there. I wish I could have had a third one, considering it's growing like a lush salad on that mound. Oh, well, Are we greedy as orchid growers. <laughs> Care collab coming up on this one. Super interesting. Looking forward to that. Right. Pan you out again and bring you back. Dendrobium lori mortimer. Well, well, what do you know? This one looked rough, but I've got two spikes coming on it. And the new growth, if I can get past my Lundii here to the right, the new growth back there is looking amazing considering the state of the orchid. When I potted her up into the lava rock, sorry for that rush movement, but the roots are going in, the canes are plumping up, she wants to bloom, new growth, it's a go. I am going to let her bloom. All right, Tortilla here, just doing its thing, doing what Tortilla does. Beautiful new growth coming, also still growing nice and strong. And then over here um, to come, Lucineri. Neostylus Lucineri with a beautiful spike, which I cannot see if it's in focus because everything is kicking off and reflecting right now. But yeah, spike on that. On my Neostylus or Neophoenicia hybrid called Rainbow Forest as per the seller. <clears throat> I have two spikes coming on her. And I'm hoping for a few more. But I'm not taking her down at the moment. I had her much, much higher light exposure last year and she was so freckled. I just thought, no, I'm not gonna do that to you this year. So maybe we only get two spikes. I'm hoping for a few more. I had nine spikes last year, so. 
I might forfeit blooms, but I want the orchid just to recover and breathe a little bit. Not to be outdone is a little tolumnia in the back there. The label says snow white, we shall see. I doubt it, but anyway, just trying to protect it from that trellis so that it doesn't get bashed and hopefully we get some blooms. And let's bring you down gently because, ta-da, still got my Parkinsonianum here. Ay, 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 so beautiful. They look like they're going over on the screen, but they're not. They look much fresher to the naked eye. That's so beautiful. I spend quite some time at night here now. I just stand here and take in the fragrance. Love, love that lemon fragrance. Love the longevity of these blooms as well. It's fantastic, fantastic orchid. Um, let me show you something else. Down here, let me just try and get you through. <laughs> this is the Van de Vietnamica. Look at that root. Woohoo, we've got a new root coming. And I'm leaving that fern in there. I'm going to make that its companion plant for humidity purposes. So yeah, this is exciting. It's the first root in about two years. I've been tidying over the roots it came with. That's awesome. And then we don't have to ignore um, Dendrobium tetragonum right here. <laughs> it's doing its party trick now. The new growth of the season is already up here. This is the two, almost three centimeters of the day. So yesterday when I saw it, the growth was down here. At night, it was over here. And this morning it was, well, three centimeters, if not more. <laughs> Love this orchid. I just wish it would give me more than one new growth. I had the first year I got it, I grew these two. So I have two directions of growth, but now it's back to back years that I only have one. That's a shame. I really wish that it would do more, but oh well. Like I said, are we greedy as orchid growers or? <laughs> ah, something else exciting. Let me scoot Pacavia away here. Look at this very slowly. This is my Tapia clandiae. Look at that. Now this is an experiment in self-watering that's been going on since I got her. She dropped three leaves at the beginning of this season super fast and I was like, okay, this one's going downhill. Prepare yourself to find a replacement, but no. She was exuding energy to grow this little growth right here. She's not happy in the setup. There's another new growth that tried. I'm not sure if that growth is actually even going to make it, but when I see new roots coming out of this new growth, I'm going into the pot, we'll assess the situation, and it's possible she's just going to go into the same setup as the Cernua, which is doing great, I'm gonna show you right now. And up here on this shelf, everybody is doing fabulous, but there's one special candidate that I do want to show you. It is possibly a first time bloomer if that she produces something, and this is magic wand. So that is exciting to me. First time I see a sheath on this orchid. Let me show you the Cernua. Check that out. That is a beautiful pseudobulb, and it was wrinkly when I took her off the mount and I had my pseudobulb markers that were sort of wrinkly to see if they would decline further but look at it, roots are in the pot. Now she is a bit wonky in that pot, but having been taken off a mount, I just hope that now she will grow her new growths according to where the light is coming from. But this is something I wanted to show you. Very, very happy, she's gonna be okay. And another one that's going to be okay, let me scoot you up a little bit. Ascocentrum ampuyathea. That root has happened. There is another root that is now, you can see it's snaking its way out of the pot and I'm okay with that because enough of the root is in the pot. Doesn't that look like a little snake there? And it's hydrating the entire orchid and I don't worry that much about it coming out of the pot. The roots otherwise going up aerial or having a field trip. And let me show you if I can find it there. Peekaboo. <laughs> oh, I, I must not laugh. It's shaky enough as it is. Sorry. I have to make sure that root doesn't touch 
the shelf because you can see the rust and that is not going to be good for the root tip. But there it is. Hello. So cute. Right, next up. Update, update on the Brassavola tuberculata. On that orchid potpourri, look at what they're doing. Loving, loving the setup here. Extending the branches that we tucked back in are extending. The only one that protested as Brassavola roots do is the one that was aerial. So that stopped, uh, kind of expected it. I was hoping it wouldn't, but you know, here we are. But these guys are happy. So if they can come out and do their thing, that's fine. Because what else is going on in there, at least some of it is getting hydrated. There's about 85% humidity in this pot. That is amazing. So that's working out. And these guys here from the same video are also doing their thing. No roots to the left, but to the right, they are extending. And soon I can fill up in the round with Lekka. Perfect. Speaking of roots, uh, <clears throat> just had to throw that in there. That is a sight. I love this so much. My CG Roebling is undecisive. The largest growth is without a sheath. So I think it's just going to object and not bloom this year. However, the really tiny little secondary lead here has a sheath. I don't know if that's going to bloom. It would be a surprise, but okay. Um, at least I can get it established after its massive undertaking early in the season. The same with my Cattleya Maxima over here. This growth is coming in way undersized compared to the others, but it's going to produce roots, which I'm really pleased about. And maybe that eye there will swell and give us a proper growth. And then I can have some blooms again next year. If it's going to skip a year, I understand. That's fine. I got my Peggy Ruth Carpenters here rooting in very, very well. That's only one division. There's two more, but it's rooting well. And look at this gorgeous growth of my Cattleya Moscom. That is why it's here now in the shade. I would love to keep this variegation in the leaf clean and not have this going on. I'm trying to find the balance on this orchid. Of course, I can't bloom it if it needs more light, but then when it gets more light, the variegation gets scorched. Ugh. This is gorgeousness as a definition in my eyes. Look, all the little pink bits going on. In of itself, beautiful. So I just wanted to share that with you. This is what it should look like and how it should stay for ever really and none of this nonsense going on we want this beautiful here i still have my cochleata chugging away it's going to be gone soon the first two spikes are going over and as i touch them they fall off and my third spike is still exuding a beautiful honey fragrance thick molasses fragrance but it's not to be outdone because of this one. Isn't that gorgeous with the sunlight hitting it right now? Oh, my goodness, the beauty of the Neos. These little blooms back here, are they falling off? That's how I test if they're done. Just touch them a little bit, there we go. Isn't that precious? Yes, so with my Parkinsonianum there in the background and the Neo, I am here quite a lot at night. <laughs> Hello, and Mr. Gecko is kind of like, what are you doing here again? Right, my golden peacock here is growing a new growth over there. I don't know if this growth is going to bloom. I don't see why it shouldn't, because the spike is now done, and you, sir, usually are not out of bloom for long. Oh well, with the competition of the little white blooms, I can see why there might be spike inhibitions on the Pro Catavola there, but this is my Dumelia arborescens, my fifth bloom, but it's going over. It was a pleasure to have it here in my blooming alley though. Yes, I've scooted it back a little bit because the angle of the sun, as you can see, it's hitting the Neo. And it is quite hot, so I don't want to scorch those leads, so I've scooted it back a little bit. 
What else can I show you? Oh my goodness, there's a beautiful, I'll bring you to the front. There's a gorgeous growth coming in there on my Cattleya Intermedia. That is amazing because the seed pod is still maturing. So this orchid is busy and uh, it has matured another new growth from the beginning of the season, which did not bloom, but that's this one right here. If I can get it, there we go. That growth did not bloom, but this one here is now pushing out its next growth. Oh, I love it when a camera just starts to focus. Perfect. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's more to look at if we go up. Oh, let me just get my bearings here. So Monachica, those are the last two blooms, bloom and a half. Came a bit distorted, but yeah. Hopefully we will see her again next year and I don't mess this one up because this spike was the biggest one I've had even from growing on the other little seedling, but I wanted to show you something. Remember that root tip I busted there? I touched it. Why would you touch a root tip? And look, it's branching. That's a beautiful sight for me. So cool up against the fur in there. It's becoming a nice little ecosystem here. Perfect. Moving on up still further. Here's Ionocentra. Actually, Panarica Ionocentra. <laughs> there, <laughs> that spike. Um, and uh, that spike. <laughs> I am so glad this orchid does this during the summer, I'm telling you. Because if this was a winter bloomer, I would be lost. I would be in panic stations. I wouldn't know where to put it. So. You do you, boo, because, yeah, this is just like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> Was I out of my mind to buy it? No, because I'm lucky it's doing this during the summer and I have space. I knocked a bud off the spike up there. It has to come down for flushing and fertilizing and promptly knocked the, knocked the bud off. But OK, <laughs> my goodness, it's going to be quite amazing. I'm looking forward to it. And before I love and leave you, my Dendrobium hibiki is back. Welcome back, pretty, pretty orchid. Look at that with the sun. Oh, I just can stand here and just, yeah, love these colors. You know, you think you know your collection and oh yeah, it's coming back into bloom. And then when you see them, it's like you see them again for the first time. Missed you guys. Welcome back. Really hope that this wasn't too shaky. It's quite difficult sometimes, some of the positions, some of the angles. I can't see my screen to reach. It's a tight squeeze. Thanks to you, Stan. I really appreciate your time. I hope it wasn't, as I said, too wobbly, too shaky. Your patience is so very much appreciated and I hope that you enjoyed seeing what you did. I cannot believe that I've just done an end of July blooming alley tour. Well, also with stands in bloom. And this is getting annoying because when the wind blows, the viewfinder cannot focus on anything specific. But I hope that you saw how beautiful they are. They are worth trying to get right. I hope everybody has a beautiful day, beautiful evening, beautiful afternoon, whatever the case may be. And thank you so much for taking time here with me in my blooming alley and listening to me geek out on a few details. Take care, please stay safe. Bye.